Hello, I'm Dan. And I'm Mr. Man. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be showing you how Google Classroom works. We're going to be teaching you how to log into Google Classrooms, how to stay safe online, how to join a Google Meet, how to create a Google Doc, how to use Google Slides and create a Google Form, as well as how to submit your work into the Google Classroom. We hope you find these videos helpful and enjoy some of the challenges your teachers will be setting you in the coming weeks. In today's tutorial, we are going to be explaining how to log into Google Classrooms. We'll be showing you how to change your passwords and keep them safe, how to stay safe online, and how to navigate your way around Google Classrooms. Your teachers will be playing this video to you at the beginning of your computing lesson, and then you will have a practice at some of the skills today. Oh no, I don't know how to log into Google Classrooms. Can you help me, Mr. Man? Sure, Dan. When you log onto your computer, go onto the internet and type Google Classrooms into the Google search bar. Press enter and then click on the link that says classroom.google.com, which is just here. Thank you, Mr. Man. But I have one slight problem. I have no idea what my login details are or where to find them. Sure, Dan. All of your login details have been given to your teacher. They are on these stickers here. Now your teacher has put one sticker inside your reading record. Thank you. And another sticker inside your learning log. See? Wow, that's great. Now I'll never lose them. Wow, thanks Mr. Man. Now I'll never be stuck again. Once you have logged in, it will show a list of classes in which you belong to. Now this student user belongs to three otters, so they're going to click onto the three otters class. But Mr. Man, how do I change my password? Changing your password is really easy. What you need to do is you need to click on the letter of your first name, the first letter of your first name, which in this case is S for student. You then need to go to manage your account and then personal info. Here it will have a, a link to a password which you need to click onto. First of all you'll need to enter the password that is on your sticker in your reading record and learning log and then it is going to ask you to enter a new password for that account. Now remember it is really important that when you are creating a new password, you must make sure that you write it down onto your reading re record sticker and your learning log sticker so that you don't forget what it's going to be in the future. Good tip. Thanks, Mr. Man. On the home page for the classroom, you will notice that there are three tabs at the top, stream, classwork and people. Stream is basically the home page. On the left hand side, you will see any upcoming work that is due in that week. Luckily, Daniel here does not have any work due in this week. Woohoo! Now, if you want to see any work that is set in future weeks, what you need to do is click on view all. And you can see here that the student has been set a piece of work, assigned a piece of work that is due in on Friday the 20th of November. Oh no. I'll just go back to the Google Classroom now. On the stream page, there is also a place where you can upload um, any messages. So if, if you wanted to send, share something with the class, maybe um, a picture of you doing a piece of work, or... Could I ask the teacher a question? Yeah, that would be a great place to ask a teacher a question. There's also another tab at the top, which is classwork. Now, the classwork tab is a place where you can see the tasks that you've been set for the future. A bit like on the stream page. There's a tab to see which work you have completed in the past. And this tab is called View Your Work. Again, if you want to see what tasks you have coming up in the future, you can click onto the Google Calendar. And here there will be 
on your calendar a link to any tasks that you have coming up. And what, what about the people tab? The people's tab isn't really that useful. It just basically has a list of people who are in your class. It also has the teachers who are assigned to your class, but really you won't have access to be able to use it anyway. So even if you try to email one of your friends, uh, uh, it will not let you because you do not have the access. Oh. If you do want to contact your teacher, Daniel, about your homework, what could you do? Could I comment? You could comment on the stream. Where else could you go? I could also, I could also, I know, Class Dojo. I could comment the teacher on Class Dojo and she could help me. Great idea, Dan. Thanks, Mr. Man. I feel so much more confident with Google Classroom and I'm ready to explore it. That's great. Now, remember, Dan, that when you're using the internet, it's really, really important that you stay safe online and you behave in the right way. What I would like you to do, Dan, before you explore Google Classrooms a bit more, is to watch this video that I'm going to show you now about how to stay safe online. Thank you. Hey, Life Babblers. The internet can be a great place to discover new things, but it can be easy to make mistakes. Socializing online can be lots of fun. Just stay smart about it. Use the same rules that you use when you're out in the real world. And when you get that message on your mobile phone, just remember, it may not be the person who you think it is. There are so many different ways of connecting with friends, but some websites have age restrictions. Check the website's terms and conditions to check if you're the right age to use it. Never arrange to meet someone you meet online, no matter how well you think you know them. It's worth remembering that everybody's different. What you find funny, someone else might not. Always treat people the way you want to be treated. I have no friends online. I'm not sure how safe it is. I sometimes feel pressure from peers to go online, but I've decided it wasn't for me. I have lots of friends online. I all know them in real life, so I don't talk to anybody that I don't know. So I don't have any friends such as Justin Bieber out of nowhere. In my opinion, just be really safe. You may have heard the word or phrase digital footprint. You might not know it, but whenever you do something online, you leave a footprint of wherever and whatever you're doing. Once you leave this footprint, it's almost impossible to get rid of. So while putting your pictures and videos online can be a great way to express your creativity and share with your friends, there's no such thing as a secret online. And once it's on the internet, a lot of that stuff is going to be there forever. It's worth remembering that when you post something online, you are potentially sharing that with billions of people all around the world. Imagine your grandma sitting behind you. What would she think? Just think before you post. Thank you for watching this week's video. We hope you enjoyed it and you learned lots of tips. Next week, we're going to be teaching you all about how to use Google Meet within Google Classroom. So bye from me. Bye from me.